Okay, I'm Alan Leubner Waitkus, and this is Introduction to Digital Photography. You should have read chapters one and two by now, and you're seeing something rare because you haven't seen a video yet. Normally I'm outside, uh, but it's hot today and uh, spitting rain every now and then. And uh, so the humidity plus the rain plus the heat, and you know, you know, I was sweating like a virgin at a prison rodeo and didn't want to um, uh, risk getting my computer wet, so I've moved indoors. Uh, for this video, I want to do a very quick video on cameras and lenses and kind of explain to you in layman's terms uh, how things work. It'll get more complicated as we move uh, through the semester, but I really want to give you a basic background on on cameras and and how that's that they they work you know we started with um capturing images on on plates and film ultimately and and ultimately what cameras capture is light okay and we'll get into lighting a lot more later but what they capture is light so again light has to be present in one form or another now what the cameras control um is how much light you allow in how long the light is 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 allowed in, uh, and some other aspects um, that we'll discuss as as we move through things. And so, again, with anything that you use, whether that be shutter speed, whether that be aperture, whether that be um, focal length of your lens, uh, whether that be ISO, you're, you're trading something for something else. Okay, so let's start with shutter speed. Okay, shutter speed is how fast that that lens opens and closes, right? So how quickly um, you're able to open and shut that lens. Now, what do you gain by that? The faster it is, the more likely something is to be in focus. The problem is the faster it is, the less light you're allowing through in, and the less light you're allowing in, the darker the picture's gonna be. So if you open it up longer so that you can allow in more light, then you run the risk of um, the photo being blurry or out of focus because of movement, whether that be movement on your part as the photographer or of the subject matter. Um, so that's one thing to consider. Uh, and shutter speeds are everything in photography is sort of reversed. Um, the shutter speeds that you see are of a second. So if it's, you know, 100, right? That would be one one hundredth of a second. Uh, and so that's the speed on, on that now, uh, and how that works. That's why everything seems backwards. Same thing with f-stops. F-stops are backwards. Now, what is, what is an f-stop? Your lenses, and this is why we don't tend to use uh, camera phones. We don't because uh, camera phones don't really allow us to control. They can artificially control these things, but they don't really have the ability to uh, open up and close up that that opening. And that's exactly what aperture is. Okay, so again, the bigger the hole, the more light it allows in. The smaller the hole, the less light it allows in. Now, what do we give up there? This is a little more complicated, but something we really need to understand as photographers. The smaller the hole, um, again, the less light we're allow, it'll allow in. So we'd need this for a bright, uh, brighter situation, right? Uh, we couldn't shoot with a with a tiny little pinhole on a, a, a dark evening or a, or inside a dark gym, let's say. But the smaller the hole, think about it when you have your eyes dilated. Um, things kind of go out of focus. And if you do like I do, you go to the eye doctor and you say, yeah, yeah, I've got somebody who's going to drive me home. Uh, and you're lying. And you have to drive home yourself. It's not that you necessarily can't focus. What you'll notice is you'll, um, you can focus on the road, right? But when you look down at your speedometer to see how fast you're going, it's out of focus. So by the time your eyes can adjust and focus to that, um, then when you look back up, the road's out of focus, okay? Uh, think of it like when you, if you've ever done this trick, if not, go do it. Uh, you go in the bathroom, I remember doing this as a kid. You go in the bathroom, you know, because presumably there's, it's dark in there. There's generally not no windows or very little light or find a room that doesn't have light and turn out the light. Um, and wait, you know, a minute or so, stare and, and looking into a mirror and then turn on the light and see how your your pupils will um, contract, right? Because they've dilated because it was dark to see more light, uh, to allow more light in, and then they, they contract. And that's what an f-stop ultimately is. Now, 
what we can control with that then is what's in focus and what's not. So the, the larger, so it would be a smaller f-stop, remember everything's in reverse. The um, larger the f-stop, the fewer things are going to be in focus, okay? And so that's how we can control depth of field. Um, right now, again, I'm on a computer uh, on a Mac filming this where I have no control over depth of field, okay? Uh, the lens has one size. And so if you look around, you can see that the things behind me are more in focus than I'd like, okay? Um, if I were using uh, a camera, what I could do is open up that f-stop, right? Open up that aperture, make that whole opening larger, and I would be in focus, but the things behind me wouldn't be in focus, okay? Uh, and so that's one of the things. Depth of field is very, very important. It's one of the things that we'll talk about again and again and again okay so we had shutter speed okay uh we have aperture we've got focal length on the lens now um you know slr uh dslr and and zlr cameras uh and we talked about that a little bit in the last video um can you know again you can get a zlr that's got 20 time uh optical zoom and remember digital doesn't count we're looking for optical um, whereas a SLR, it's much more expensive. We want to consider for about every 100 millimeter the lens is, we get twice the zoom. So for, for instance, a 200 millimeter lens would get us twice as close. Now, what do we give up with that? What do we give up with a larger lens? Well, um, think of it in terms of, I do sort of a trick in class where I, I hold my hand, if I had a pencil, I don't have anything in, in reach that would... Um, that would work. But if I kind of shake my hand a little bit, you can barely see it actually. I think I have a spoon, a plastic spoon. Give me a second. Pow. All right, so I'm gonna take this spoon and uh, I'm gonna move my finger just a little bit, right? And you barely see any movement. Now I'm moving my finger the same amount and notice on the end here how much movement there is. Think of that in terms of a lens. Once you're zooming in more, you could barely be moving. So if you had a smaller lens, there would be no blur, right? But when you get a larger lens and you're zooming in more, then you get in a larger, um, then you're, you've got more of a risk of, of blurring. And so what do you have to do in that situation? You have to increase your shutter speed. What happens when you increase your shutter speed? You have to allow more light in, right? By opening up that aperture. What happens when you open up that aperture? Fewer things are going to be in focus, okay? And you have to, so again, we call this the law of reciprocity. Okay, things have to balance out um, for photography to work, right? We can't just say, well, what I'm going to do here, it's really, really dark, so I'm going to open up uh, my aperture, you know, my f-stop as wide as it'll go, okay? And I'm going to keep my shutter open forever uh, and allow all the light in. Well, then what's going to happen? Things are going to be blurry because you're going to have movement. Um, and so those things have to balance out. We have to, you know... Uh, balance those things to get an image that captures just the way we want it to. Um, but we also need to learn, and I'll, and I'll post some things on your website, about the different functions and, and what they'll do. Again, you know, if you put it on sports function, what's it going to do? It's going to increase your shutter speed as quickly as possible uh, based on the lighting situation so that you can stop the action. What's that going to do? That's going to open up uh, your aperture as wide as possible. What's that going to cause? Fewer things to be in focus. And so while that's can be a hassle at times, it's other times it can be a benefit uh, to what you're trying to do. So as we move through the course, you, I think you'll understand things a little better. The key is, you know, to play around with your cameras to determine how to alter your f-stops, how to offer alter your um, uh, shutter speeds. Uh, ISO, that's another big thing, and we'll discuss that a little more later. That's uh, something left over from the film days that we still use in the digital times, but we'll talk about you know how to alter that and again what you're giving up there and what you're not. So until the next video, use this time to really play with your camera uh, and see what it does, what you have control over, what you don't, and how it works in different situations. And if you have any questions, give me a call. Thank you.